What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2020 Hyundai Palisade. Now the Palisade is a new introduction into Hyundai's lineup. It's a three row SUV. It's larger than the Santa Fe, uh, and, but it's not too big. And, and that's something that kind of surprised me when I first saw it. It's not as big as you think it would be. So let's go ahead and do what we always do on this channel. And we walk through every little feature here. This trim we're looking at is the limited trim. So it's gonna have every bell and whistle under the sun. And I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible because it is freezing and windy. So if the audio is a little hard to hear, that's why. So let's go ahead and start up front. Now, since this is a brand new introduction, I'm not really going to go over what's new necessarily because it's all new, but I am going to just point out things as we go along. Now, again, starting up front, you've got this nice mesh grill. It's got this nice, uh, kind of brushed metal look to it. It's really polished. It's uh, got the big Hyundai logo here. You'll notice parking sensors around the front, as well as a very distinct uh, headlight cluster. So it's separated. You've got these thin, low profile headlights here, like we first saw on the Kona when they brought those really thin, kind of almost like eyebrow looking headlights here, and then a larger cluster underneath. Now they are LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and LED tail lights. One more thing I did want to mention about the headlights is these are by headlights. So they have not only a high beam, but also a low beam for better visibility. And uh, you do have uh, these really cool designs that kind of connect here with the kind of swoop down from the, the smaller uh, DRLs up here down into the high beams here, which looks really, really nice. So the whole suite of LED features up here in the front and in the back. Now again, parking sensors, like I mentioned, you do have a front facing camera here that works with the surround vision camera system as well. And then if you, any of you guys know what this is right here uh, down in the front, let me know. Can't quite figure it out. It looks kind of like a wireless charging pad, but I would assume it's some kind of sensor. Uh, so that is there. Now under the hood, you've got a 3.8 liter V6. That'll get you 291 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque, 26 miles per gallon highway and 19 miles per gallon city in ideal conditions as always. Now moving on over, you've got 20 inch limited exclusive wheels here. So very particular to this trim. Additionally, some of the exterior trim that you see, the, the brushed metal trim that I mentioned is exclusive to the limited. So now moving on over to the side mirrors, these are really cool too, the way they're designed. They're power folding side mirrors with blind spot monitoring. And they also have the uh, blind spot monitor cameras built into the bottom that not only help with the blind spot monitor camera, which we'll take a look at when we're inside the car, but also um, with the surround vision system that I talked about. And they have these uh, integrated turn signals on the outside that are in a really cool position and design. So people uh, that are oncoming as well can see on your side mirrors that you are turning, not only the people behind you or to your side. So really cool there. Uh, I like that feature in the design there. It looks really nice. Moving on over to the door handles, uh, you've got this same kind of brushed metal look specific to the limited here. It also has keyless access here, so you can go ahead and lock and unlock the door uh, using that. Go ahead and push that, boom, it'll lock there, and then just push it again for the unlock and you can get right in. Super simple, love that. Now up top, you've got this kind of split sunroof. So it's kind of a smaller normal looking sunroof up here, but if you move on to the back, you get a little bit of a panoramic as it works its way back into the second and third rows. So that looks really nice. Now you can get optional roof rails as well. This specific one does not have it, but we have another limited that does have them, but this one just has the brushed metal uh, look where you can actually mount the roof rails. So that's a really cool feature to have as well. Now, moving on to the back, you've got these nice big LED tail lights, like I mentioned, and they mirror the by headlights in the front with that kind of tall boxy design to them. And you've got some more of that really nice polished metal look to it in the back as well on some of the trims going around the headlights. You also have dual chrome exhaust tips down low, a rear wiper, a rear vision camera here, just your standard kind of camera, but it does work with that surround system. Par parking sensors in the back here, and you have the power lift gate here that you can just open hitting the button on the tailgate or you can use the button on the remote. All right, now before we hop inside, I did wanna show you kind of in the back the nice features that you get back here. So there's the push you know, to open lift gate that we've got going here. I've got some of my camera gear kind of spread out here in the back but it does show you that you do have pretty ample space. Now, more specifically, when the rear seats are laid down, you get a lot more space. If I were to go ahead, move this stuff up and use the power buttons to lift the rear seats. So 
you've got second row and third row. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those up. Just a one touch button and they fold right up. Super, super handy. Takes a second, but you know, convenience over, you know, speed, I guess. So these are up now. So this is the amount of space you have. Now this is a pretty hefty kind of case here. Can't lay that way, unfortunately, but you could lay it flat just like that. And you could pile a little more stuff here. So not a ton of space, but definitely some. Now, if we go ahead and push the one touch button again, they're gonna go ahead and lay down. Now I get some serious space to start storing stuff. Additionally, you can do the same with the front rows. So one touch those, boom, they fold right down. So you've got a lot of storage space here with all those rear seats folded down. So super handy, uh, really nice feature to have here in the rear gate. So that is everything there on the exterior. Let's go ahead and hop inside. All right, guys, there is a ton to cover inside this cabin. This thing is incredible. It's almost like the inside of an airplane uh, with the amount of features and buttons and gadgets and doohickeys that it has. So I'll try my best to just run through this so you guys aren't sitting here forever. But let's go ahead and start up front with this awesome leather wrapped heated steering wheel. This thing's a beast. It's got that nice uh, brushed metal look just like we saw on the outside of the vehicle as well. You've got your adaptive cruise control buttons over here and your media buttons on the left side paddle shifters, light controls, wiper controls, all that good stuff right up here on this beautifully designed steering wheel. Now, right past the steering wheel, you've got that incredible Hyundai 12.3 inch digital dash. This thing is awesome. It gives you all the information you could possibly want. Uh, some really cool uh, animations when you switch driving modes, you get a beautiful display of your adaptive cruise control. You can do navigation right on there. It's fantastic. So right now I've got it just set. It's got a, a relatively decent amount of customization, not a ton, but you can use the buttons here to switch through uh, what mode you wanna see, all kinds of good stuff. I really, really, I love that display there. Um, right past that, you've got a heads up display there on the windshield. That has a lot of custom information you can put on there as well. Uh, I talked about this, if you've seen my Hyundai Sonata 2020 overview, I talk all about the uh, heads up display, all about that display uh, underneath the 12.3 inch digital dash. It's a great system. Moving on over to the right, you've got a 10.25 inch infotainment center. Awesome, I love this thing. So you've got three different columns here, uh, kind of panels where you can put different information if you wanna see all kinds of good stuff at one time. You can open those up to be full screen as well. You've got navigation built into this. This is the limited, so you'd expect that. You've got Bluetooth, radio, you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You've got HD radio data. You've got a voice memo section where you can record things. You've got Blue Link. You've got your media section, so USB audio, Bluetooth audio, that kind of stuff. And then you have uh, like settings. You have the ability to control the rear climate, lock it, unlock it, all the stuff you're used to seeing on like a three row car. You wanna be able to have that control when there's kids in the back. Driving info and setup. Now there's a few other things that I wanna talk about in this that are pretty neat. Uh, number one is driver talk. Now driver talk basically is an intercom system. So it uses the microphone. I would assume it's somewhere up here. It's probably built in somewhere up here. But anyway, open up driver talk. If you go ahead and hit talk now, it'll start using the microphone, wherever it is, to project your voice back into the back seats. So super cool if there's kids back there, you don't wanna scream, turn your head, do that a whole kind of number, you just hit driver talk. You go ahead and just talk normally what you wanna say and they can hear you. Only problem is they can't respond, so you still have to kind of turn the music down, listen up to what they're saying. But that is cool that you can, instead of whipping around dangerously, turning your head, trying to talk to the kids, you can just use driver talk uh, to make it happen. So that is one cool thing. Additionally, you have something that Hyundai is calling quiet mode and quiet mode basically uh, disables, and it tells you right here, it disables the volume in the back speakers and only uh, allows the front speakers to work and it turns them down as well. So let's say you got kids sleeping in the back, you're on a long road trip, they finally fall asleep, they're not you know, yelling, screaming, kicking each other. Go ahead, hit quiet mode, cuts the audio back there, lets them sleep and lets you still continue to listen to the radio. So quiet mode, super, it's basically, it's ingenious really, um, but that is the feature there. So that is some of the cool stuff on the infotainment center. Now, additionally, I did mention that you have that surround vision kind of camera system. If you go into reverse uh, or neutral or drive, really, you can see it um, any way you want. 
but you have all these different camera angles you can switch between. So you've got your standard backup camera, you've got a straight down view of the curb, you've got a split view of your back tires, and then you've got custom controls where you can change brightness, contrast, all that kind of good stuff. You get the 360 degree camera on the right side, kind of a split screen action as well. And then if you go into neutral, you can switch to the front cameras. So you can see uh, the, just your standard front camera straight down and then the split front tires as well. So a plentiful camera system there uh, to say the least here on the Palisade. So let's keep working our way down. Now you've got that smart system here with all the you know touchscreen controls that you're used to seeing, you know, pinch to zoom on the navigation and all that kind of good stuff. But you also have physical buttons right down here that uh, allow you to do basically anything. Uh, you've got your map button, your navigation button, which are the same thing. Um, but one gives you the actual map, one gives you points of interest. You've got your radio button, your media button, and seek track. You've got your flashers and your favorites button. So everything is customizable using hardware buttons as well as software buttons. Super nice uh, volume button here. Oh, I like this song. But I don't want to get a copyright strike, so I'll turn that off. But uh, then you've got the tuning button here as well, so you can switch radio stations super, super easily right there. Uh, one of the nicest looking button layouts that I've ever seen, especially on a uh, vehicle at a lower price point. Moving on down, you've got this entire uh, climate control and button system that is really entirely made possible by the fact that there is not a shift knob. And you can probably tell. It's you know not here, it's not here, it's not here. Right here, shift by wire uh, with these buttons, just like we saw on the Sonata. Now the Palisade came out before the Sonata, so it's I should say you know one to the other. But I think it's it's Hyundai's new thing uh, that they're going with here with the button system. And a lot of higher end vehicle manufacturers do this, but at a lower price point, it's really cool to see. So how that basically makes room is it frees up all this space to have your climate controls, your different drive modes, and all kinds of other feature buttons here. And then you've got a big old console here with plenty of um, features and charging ports and all kinds of good storage space, which you need in a car that's this big, that's meant to be a family car. So like I said, dual zone climate control here. So you've got the passenger side and the driver's side, and then you've got the ability to control the rear climate as well. Now, moving on down, like I said, you've got those uh, buttons here that you can switch the driving modes. One really interesting little note here <laughs> is that if you go to drive, if you go from park to drive, the LEDs behind the letters light up and they're a little bit different color and I'll show you close up here so you can see. But when you actually switch back to park, it actually cycles back through all the gears like you were doing it manually. Interesting little touch that they threw in there, but I, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of neat to watch, but a little bit unnecessary, I feel like, but it's there. Moving right on over from that is the auto vehicle hold button. So basically you push that. If you come to a complete stop and you take your foot off the brake, the car will stay in place where it is. Next to that, you've got this wheel and it is the drive mode selector wheel. So you've got snow, eco, comfort, sport, and smart. And then there is a kind of wheel lock button in between. But the only weird thing about this wheel is that you can't actually just continue to turn it. So um, you go smart, sport, comfort, eco, snow, but you can't go from snow to smart without going all the way back around, kind of like a rotary dial. Nonetheless, it's there. Now, as you switch between these different driving modes, it'll tell you on the screen that you've switched between the driving modes, but it also gives you a cool animation on the digital dash. So smart is like a blue, Sport, it does an explosive animation. You get this red look. Comfort, it does a little mellowing out animation, goes back to that blue color. Eco does a little bit of a kind of a technological transformation. It goes from uh, that blue to green. And then if you go down to snow, it goes actually back to blue, but more of like a white accent to it. And I don't think there's much of a significant difference between the driving modes. I did, uh, I usually pick sport to drive around in. I think that's just my preferred mode, but you do get a little more um, of a longer shift. Uh, time to it so you can accelerate for a little longer and things like that but other than that i didn't notice much now moving on over you've got your hill descent control right there you can turn your auto start stop engine button on you can press if you're neutral you can press the camera view button to switch and then you can turn the um, parking uh, system off now moving on down you've got your ventilated seats your heated seats your heated steering wheel and then the passenger heated and ventilated seat button right there moving on down you may have seen me open this a little bit earlier but there is a button right here you push and that will slide this back revealing a wireless charging pad here on the limited usb a port and then these kind of really unique cup holders they 
they kind of disappear to give you more space if you don't want to use them. But when you do need to use them, there are these little buttons. You just push them and the cup holder whips out and allows you to, to put just cups in there as you normally would. And then you can hide those away if you don't need them. Again, super cool. Inside the center console here, you've got another USB-A port as well as a 12 volt outlet, a nice little removable tray here and a pretty deep space down there to store stuff. Additionally, underneath the center console here, you've got an additional 12 volt outlet, another USB port down here and just a ton of storage space down there to put water bottles or lunch boxes or snacks or, you know, uh, iPads or anything you want to store down there to get it out of the way. So tons of tons of storage space in here. And then you've got your glove compartment here. Nothing really fancy about that. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about controls here. You've got your uh, sunroof controls here. So for this one, this one has a shade as well. And then you've got the panoramic one in the back. You can control it all up here. You've got your dome lights here. You've got your blue link controls, your waypoint and your SOS. Over here, you've got this rear view mirror that has the universal home light garage door opener controls. No compass. Uh, it's doesn't look like it's auto dimming, but it may be. If it is, I'll put it in the note um, on screen here. Other than that, uh, as far as kind of design goes, you it, it's a really, really beautiful uh, upscale looking cabin in a couple different ways. First of all, you've got this like microfiber material that runs all on the headliner of the car, all the way to the back. Feels super, super nice, soft touch. Um, looks like it'd be relatively easy to clean, um, which is you know something you want in a family car. Uh, leather, again, on the steering wheel, this nice leather material, a uh, little bit of soft touch rubber up top, a lot of different textures and colors going on. So soft touch rubber here, kind of a black plastic here with some like sparkly bits on it. And then you have this kind of quilted pattern here that runs on the door panels. It's on the seats here. You also have it on the rear seats, on the door panels in the back. It kind of runs throughout the cabin. So a lot of different colors and textures going on, but it all really works together. It makes it look really, really high end. Now, I did want to mention the sticker price on this is about 48 grand. So it's not the cheapest car that you're going to get, but for the amount of features you get, I think it's pretty reasonable. Now on the dash here, more of that soft touch rubber, you have this nice silver piece that really accents the, the outside and the inside, kind of makes it all feel together. Uh, on the speaker here as well, you've got a Harman Kardon audio system here. You've got this nice um, kind of silver chrome mesh looking grill. And then on the center console here, I like what they did here. They could have given you the kind of cheap plastic look, but they gave you almost this textured gray finish that looks like it's gonna be a little bit more rugged and maybe hold up to some of the more uh, the beatings it's gonna take uh, being the center console here. So I really like that. It really has a nice contrast and look with the rest of the cabin. So just a beautiful design overall going on inside the cabin here. And I really like what they've done with it. Now you've got these beautiful Napa leather, uh, black heated and ventilated seats. Like I mentioned, you have eight way power adjustable driver seat, eight way power adjustable passenger seat. The driver seat has four way lumbar support and two way thigh support. Not much more you can ask for. In the back row, you've got second row captain's chairs that are heated and ventilated. You have ventilated captain's chairs in the second row. And you've got just normal seats in the third row that are the power folding ones up and down. Super nice. Just a plethora of connectivity options in here. Uh, in the back, you've got USBs, two USBs built into the back of the seats here. And then you've got a 115 volt outlet as well as another 12 volt outlet back there all the climate controls you could possibly need, heated and ventilated seats, all the different temperatures, they're kind of split temperatures in the back as well. USB ports all the way in the third row, which I love, not enough cars do this, but it is back there. Just a plethora of options and some really nice safety features in the back. Not only do you have the convenience features of folding the seats down uh, with the one touch button, but you also have safe exit assist. Now safe exit assist, actually uses the camera systems to detect if there's a vehicle oncoming uh, towards either side of your car. And if a child is trying to open that rear door, when there's a car driving by, it will lock the door and not allow the child to open the door into the oncoming vehicle. I think that's just genius. Uh, and I don't know why more people haven't incorporated that into their vehicles, but Hyundai did and you've got it. Safe assist, safe exit assist. You also have rear shades there uh, for when the sun's a little bit too bright on the rear windows which I like to see. And again, just a lot of premium design back there. You got rear vents like we already talked about. All that same kind of quilted pattern follows the trend all the way to the back seats. 
it's just, it's really a beautiful car when you're sitting inside it. Now you also get a plethora of safety features with Hyundai's Smart Sense safety systems. I've talked about these in, in past videos, but you do get the forward collision alert, uh, the side blind zone alert, uh, blind spot monitoring, and even that safe exit assist that I talked about, all kinds of good stuff. If you wanna know more about the safety systems, drop a like on the video and I'll make sure to make a full safety features video. All right guys, and that is the all new 2020 Hyundai Palisade. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, what's your favorite feature? How, what do you think about the size and the spacing of it? Do you like the looks of the exterior? Let's have a conversation about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see our full review on every single new Hyundai model as soon as it hits our lots. We'll see you in the next one.